We're now going to look at radial electric fields. So if you remember, we've said point charges or charge spheres produce radial fields. So here we have a positive charge and the field lines are leaving the charge and they're leaving at 90 degrees. So the electric field strength at a point is given by this equation. So it's given by KQ divided by R squared. So Q is the charge of our object and R is the distance from the centre of the object to point P. So you can see that the electric field strength obeys an inverse square law with distance. And K, K is constant and it equals 1 divided by 4 times pi times epsilon 0, where epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space. And free space meaning empty space or vacuum. Coulomb's law looks at the force between two charged objects and it's similar to Newton's law of gravitation which looks at the gravitational force between two objects with mass. So Coulomb's law says that the electric force is directly proportional to the product of the charges but is inversely proportional to the square of the distance r. So we can express Coulomb's law mathematically by this equation which is equal to kq1 times q2 divided by r squared and you can see it's very similar to Newton's law of gravitation where it where that would be f the gravitational force is equal to minus g m1 m2 divided by r squared. So again you can see that the electric force between the charges obeys an inverse square law with distance. And the k is that k constant we saw earlier which is equal to the 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon 0. So charges q1 and q2 will exert equal and opposite forces on each other. doesn't matter about the relative sizes of the charges because they are obeying Newton's third law of motion. If we have like charges, so they will have the both the same signs, then the force will be positive, which is telling us that we are getting a repulsion between the charges. If we have unlike charges, they will have opposite signs, so the force will be negative and that tells us then that they are attracted to each other. Q2 is in the electric field of Q1. So if we were to determine the electric field strength due to Q1 at the point where Q2 is, well the definition of electric field strength at a point is equal to the force exerted per unit charge at that point. So at that point the charge is Q2. So the electric field strength will equal force acting divided by charge Q2. The force acting on Q2 is found from Coulomb's law. And if we substitute force F into our equation for electric field strength, we get then the electric field strength due to Q1 is equal to KQ1 divided by R squared. Q1 is in the electric field of Q2. So if we determine the electric field strength due to Q2 at the point where Q1 is, well then it will equal the force divided by charge Q1. The force acting on Q1 is again given by Coulomb's law. And so if we substitute for F into this equation for electric field strength, we see then that the electric field strength due to Q2 is equal to KQ2 divided by R squared. These equations are the electric field strength for point charges. 
So even though charges Q1 and Q2 may be different, and so they have different electric field strengths, the force they exert on each other are the same.